Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful, blessed day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now just to give him the thanks right now. Just to give him the praise right now. And always give him the glory. Because God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. That's why I love thanking him. That's why I love praising him. That's why I love glorifying him. That's why I seek him. That's why I pour my heart out to him each and every day. Because I need you, Jesus. I need you more and more each and every day. My sisters need you more and more every day. My brothers need you more and more every day. This world, this corrupted, this wicked world, they need you right now today, Jesus. They need your righteous right hand right now today, Jesus, to touch down and heal this forsaken and wicked place. What's going on in this forsaken country right now? We need you, God. Listen to the cries today, God. Listen to our hearts out today, God, as we plead to you, God, as we cry to you for help. And God, we know that you will never turn your back against us. Father God, you know every last one of us who in need of you right now. And I believe and I declare and I'm speaking into an existence. I'm prophesying over it right now today that God, that you will come through and that you will come through quick and you will come through fast in the hurry for everyone who is calling out your name. Because, Father God, there's a lot of brothers, there's a lot of sisters, even myself, we are calling out your name right now. Father God, we know that you're never too busy. You're always working. You work with the left and you also work with the right. Father God, we come before you today because this is your day, the day that you have made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and rejoice in it, Father God. Father God, we wouldn't be here right now today, Jesus, if you were done with us. Father God, I say we wouldn't be here right now today if our story was done. We wouldn't be right here today, Father God, if our testimony would not come to pass. So, Father God, we thank you in the advance. We praise you in the advance. We glorify your holy name right now today, God, in advance. Because you're an awesome God. You're a faithful God. You're a God of everything. You are bigger than our problems. You are bigger than our situation. You are bigger than our circumstances. You are bigger than our suffering. You are bigger than our pain. You are bigger than our hardship. You are bigger. You are bigger. So my brothers, my sisters, you cannot, you cannot go on and believe those lies what the enemy is telling because he's not going to tell you the truth. He's a deceiver. He's not going to keep it real with you. So the moment... When you know those negative thoughts start coming in your mind, you got to say, I rebuke you right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. Get away from me with those lies. Get away from me with those accusations because I know that's not coming from God. I know what you're trying to tell me is not true. I know it's all make-believe. I know it's fake. I know it's phony because that's who you are. Praise is an everyday thing. It's not an on and off switch thing, my brothers and sisters. It is an everyday thing because our God is still on the throne and he is still performing miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. That's why I'm always encouraging every last one of y'all to give him thanks, praise, and glory. This all started thinking praise when things are going good or God gave you something because it's going to come a time when things are not going to go good. It's going to come a time when things are dark. It's going to come a time when you face trouble. It's going to come a time when you go through pain and suffering and hardship. But if you start thinking and praise and during those times, it's going to make the rest of the days and the rest of your time go easy. Yes, the pain going to be there. Yes, the suffering going to be there. Yes, the hardship going to be there. But when you praise, good God Almighty, it's going to make more ease to you. It's going to make sense to you. It's going to let you know that God is right there for you. That he'll never, he'll never forsake, you, forsake you. He'll never turn his back against you. He's right there rocking with you right now today. Even though you don't see anything, he's still rocking with you. Now, I need all my brothers, I need all my sisters right now today. If you really, really love with Jesus, give him a shout out of thanks right now. Give him a shout out of praise right now. And give him a shout out of glory right now today in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, Father God. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. Father God, thank you for my, allowing me, myself, my brothers, and my sisters to come, to come together in your house today to praise you, to worship you, and to have service in your house right now. 
Father God, you have your way with us right now today, God. Father God, your house is a house of prayer and praise, God. That's what we're doing in your house. We are praying and we having and we are worshiping in your house. Father God, your word tells us in the book of Matthew, verse 18 and 19, when two or more gather in your name, hallelujah, then you are in the midst of things. So, Father God, I know that you're in the midst of our homes right now. I know that you're in the midst of our television sets right now. I know that you're in the midst of our telephones right now, our laptops, our desktops, and even our iPad. God, you have your way. Father God, we can't do it without you, Jesus. So we're counting on you. We're depending on you. We also rely on you right now today, God, to do something like you never done before. Father God, we want to lift your name up to the highest high right now today, God, in your place, God. Oh, God, we came in for a reason. We came in for a purpose, God. And God, we ain't leaving your house till we leave here full and satisfied. Father God, we, we exalt your name today, God, in your house. We magnify your name in your house, God. Father God, continue to watch over us, protect us, and shield us, God. Father God, we know that we're in great hands, God, as the word says in Psalms 91. And Father God, we stand on that word. We stand on your promises, God, because we know that you're a man that you should not lie. Father God, you know every last one our needs. You know every last one our concerns, God. And God, I know that you're going to come through. I know that you're a provider. I know that you're a healer. I know that you're making a way out of nowhere right now. Even though we don't see it or understand it, we know that you're going to come through, Jesus. Father God, allow your spirit to move through this house right now. Father God, you touch my sister. You touch my brothers right now in an amazing way right now. Speak to their ear right now today, God. Oh God, we want to thank you, Father God. Father God, we want to give you the glory in your house. We want to give you the praise in your house right now. Oh Father God, we want to say we thank you for everything that you've done. We thank you for everything that you're doing. And we want to say thank you, Jesus. We love you. We honor you. And we praise your holy name. Let the church come together and say amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And yes, Father God, I'm here today on behalf of myself, my brothers, and all my sisters right now today. And I'm here to repent of our sins because, yes, God, we did make some mistakes today. We did even fail short today, God. We're not perfect, God. But, God, we are being honest with you. We're keeping it real with you because I know right now today there's somebody ready to tell you something that we did today. So you ain't got to worry about him. You ain't got to worry about her. So, Father God, you are hearing it from the horse's mouth right now today. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking of you right now today to please forgive me, my brothers, my sisters, for every anything, God, we've done wrong in the sight of your eyes. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for every anything, God, we've done wrong that was not set right in your heart. Father God, please forgive me, my brothers and my sisters, for anything that we participated on, God, that was not, that was in our head, God, that was not part of your will. Please forgive us. Wash us clean, God. Purify us, God. Clean us up as white as snow today, God. Father God, I want to say thank you, Father God, for forgiving us for our sins. I want to say thank you, Father God, for giving us a second chance. I want to say thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. I want to say thank you, Jesus. 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 I want to say thank you. In your holy, precious, mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And before I get started, I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Amen. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father God, I just came thanking you for this awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you, Father God, for this word. I can't thank you for this anointing message. I just can't thank you for the air that we are able to breathe right now today, Father God. I can't thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. I can't thank you for our help and our strength. I can't thank you for the food that you have blessed and prepared to put on our table, the clothing shoe that you have put on our back. I just can't thank you, Father God, for your words. I can't thank you for your promises. I can't thank you, Father God, for your anointing that you have over our life. I just can't thank you, Father God, for the angels that is joining us in praise and worship right now. I can't thank the Father God for the Holy Spirit that is moving through us right now. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a healer and you also are a provider. I just can't thank the Father God because you're making a way out of no way. I just can't thank the Father God because you are a man that you should not lie. I just can't thank the Father God because you said that you never leave us or forsake us. I just can't thank the Father God because you say trust you at all times that you got our back no matter what the situation looked like. I just can't thank the Father God because we can always 
always call, count, and depend, rely on you. I just can't thank the Father God for your love. I can't thank the for your faithfulness. I just can't thank enough Jesus because you are bigger than everything that we are going through, that you are bigger than everything that we are facing. I just can't thank the Father God how you moving mountains on our behalf right now today. We don't even see it or even realize it. I just can't thank enough for our blessing right now. I can't thank enough for our breakthrough right now. I can't thank enough for our nothing right now. I can't thank enough for our deliverance right now. I can't thank enough for our double portion right now. I can't thank enough for our more than enough right now. I just can't thank enough for the God for your glory right now. I just can't thank enough for the God that we able able to praise you and lift your name up to the highest high right now. I just can't thank enough for the open doors. I can't thank enough for the door that you about to close. I can't thank enough for the rain that's coming, God, because I smell the rain. I just can't thank enough for the God for the connection. I can't thank enough for the resources. I just can't thank enough for the God for the protection. I just can't thank enough for the help that's coming, Father God. I just can't thank enough for the God because you about to open up the floodgates of heaven and you about to pour the blessing on my brothers and sisters, even myself, that we gonna be able to handle it all at one time. I just can't thank enough for the God because we can always call your name and you are always right there that you're on time God that you is God the same today yes and forevermore God I just can't thank you enough Jesus 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 I just can't thank you you enough Jesus I just can't thank you enough Jesus I just can't thank you enough that's why I praise you the way I do Jesus because I can't thank you enough that's why I put my heart out to you every day Jesus because I can't thank you enough that's why I love you the way I do Jesus because I can't thank you enough that's why I'm always talking about you every day Jesus because I can't thank you enough that's why I put my faith my trust my hope in your hands every day Jesus because I can't thank you I just 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 can't thank you. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. I say I can't thank you enough, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you can't thank Jesus enough, Say, Jesus, I can't thank you enough, and I'm ready for this word. And if you're ready for this word, shout out amen and amen. Hallelujah. We're going to read for two scriptures today. We're going to read from Ezekiel 3, verses 1 and 3, and we're going to finish off at John 15, verses 5 through 6. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Ezekiel 3, and we're going to read verses 1 and 3, then we're going to finish off at John 15, verses 5 and 6. Amen. Amen. And he said to me, Son of man, Eat what is before you. Eat this straw. Then go and speak to the house of Israel. So I opened up my mouth, and he gave me the straw to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this straw. I'm giving you. Fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. And the word that God spoke to me today, without no honey, there will never be no money. This is your honey. If you can't stick to this word right here, you cannot expect God to open up doors. You cannot expect God to, to bless you. You cannot expect God to use you. You cannot expect Jesus to do anything to you if you are not connected through this right here. If you are not abiding by this word, how can you expect Jesus to do things in your life? How can you expect miracles to come in your life? A lot of you right now today, you are not close to the word, but you want to be close to the world. That's two different things. Without no honey, there's no money. And a lot of you right now today, you are swearing that you are getting blessed. Every day I hear some, oh, I'm getting blessed. Oh, I got blessed today. Oh, so many blessings came to me today. Do you understand what a blessing is? Blessings are not free. Blessings do have to work for those blessings. 
You got to put in some work for those blessings. You got to put in some time for those blessings. You're going to have to suffer a little bit for those blessings. You had to go through some pain for that blessing. You had to go through some hardships for that blessing. And a lot of you right now today, you can't handle pain like you said you can handle pain. You can't handle hardships neither. So I don't know what kind of blessing that you are getting, but it's not the blessing that it comes from God because you are not close to the word. When you're close to this word, this word, it sticks to you. What, what sticks to anything? Honey sticks to everything. So without no honey, there's no money. So without the honey being stuck to you, how can you be, how can you be getting a blessing? How can you be getting breakthroughs? How can you be getting miracles? What you are stuck to, you are stuck to somebody else who give you a blessing. Yeah, he can give you a blessing too. But when he give you a blessing, you're going to have to pay for the old blessing. He's going to snatch the old blessing back from you. Are you following me what I'm saying? So when the prophet Ezekiel ate it, he said he ate the word. And he said the word was so good to him, it stuck to him. And when you stick to this word and the word, oh, help me with this, God. When you stick to the word and the word stick to you, you can apply to it on, on an everyday, daily basis of what you are going through in life. And you can say, you know what? I'm going through this. I'm facing this. But I am stuck to this word. This word stuck to me. And as long as I'm stuck to this word and this word stuck to me, I have a, 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 a nice, perfect relationship with Jesus. And once you have that relationship with Jesus, there's nothing. There's nothing that can separate their bond. Why can't separate? Because you are stuck to the honey. Jesus is the honey. His word is the honey. His promises is the honey. His blessings is the honey. His breakthroughs is the honey. His miracles is the honey. So when you are close to that, there's nothing can separate y'all two. Are you following me what I'm saying? Too many of you right now today, you're expecting blessing. You're expecting God to open up doors. But how you expect God to do that for you when you're not even stuck to nothing? You stuck to garbage. I'm stuck to the word. You stuck to the world, but I'm stuck to the word of God. It's two different things, my sisters. It's two different things, my brothers. A lot of y'all got the game messed up. You got the game twisted. Basically, Jesus is saying, how can you expect me to do something? When you and I, we only have a relationship. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, there's no way in the way that you're getting blessed. And a lot of you right now today, you know exactly who you are. You do not have no relationship with Jesus. And the reason why I know that, because you are not stuck to this word and this word not stuck to you. You cannot have no relationship with, with Jesus because Jesus is the word. Jesus is the word. So if you're not in this Bible, if this Bible is not stuck to you, if your nose is not in it every day, there's no way that you can understand him. There's no way that you know him. And there's no way that you have a relationship with him. There's no way that both of y'all even stuck together. This word today is about a relationship. This word in this message today is talking about how close you and Jesus is. But everybody's not close to Jesus like they say they is. And you know who y'all Amen. Amen. Turn your Bible to John 15. John 15, and we're going to read verse 5 and 6. If you have it, let the church say amen. John 15, verse 5 and 6. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Now I'm going to stick right there. Jesus is saying, right, he will bear much fruit. How can you bear much fruit? The only way that you can bear much fruit is a relationship with Jesus. The only way that you can bear much fruit if you are stuck to this word and this word tastes, tastes just like honey. That's the only way that you can be fruitful. And that's what he's talking about. Jesus does not add to your life. He multiplies to your life because y'all two are joining together. Because the word is stuck to you. You are stuck to the word. And because you have that relationship with Jesus and Jesus had that relationship with you, he's telling you he will never allow nobody to hurt you. He will never allow nobody to harm you. He will never allow nobody to shame you. He said no weapon formed against you should never work. It should never prosper. Because of the relationship that you have is because that you are stuck to them. How can you get stuck to Jesus? I'm glad you asked me. The only way that you can get stuck to Jesus is by being stuck to this word. 
What did God tell Ezekiel? He said, eat my straw. So when Ezekiel ate it, he said, it tastes good. It tastes like honey. That means that the word was good. The word was promises. The word was light. The word uplifted him. And he stuck to the word because the word stuck to him because Ezekiel and God had a relationship. God had a relationship with Ezekiel. Ezekiel had a relationship with God. So that's why Ezekiel can bear much fruit. That's why I can bear much fruit. That's why a lot of you right now today, my brothers and sisters, that's why you can bear much fruit because you are stuck to the word and the word is stuck to you because Jesus is the word. Come on somebody you ain't telling me that. When you know that Jesus is the word and the word is Jesus and you had that relationship he said that you would bear much fruit because why? Y'all have a relationship and he said in that relationship that y'all have he said nobody can separate y'all. Why you can't be separated? Because honey sticks. Honey sticks to you. Honey is really, really sticky. I, I want to ask y'all this question right now. If you're in your house right now, go in your kitchen, go in your cabinet. If you have a jar of honey now, I want you to open that jar up and stick your hand in that jar and tell me what you feel in that jar. It's sticky, right? Okay. When you see that word, you see that honey that's sticky, that means that word is that honey. And when you start when you start diving deep in that word and that word start diving deep in you, you get stuck in it. Then that word gets stuck with you. And when you get stuck in that word and that word gets stuck with you, they mean that you are already stuck with Jesus because Jesus is the word. And the word is Jesus. So when you stuck with that, they mean that you have a bond, that you have a connection, that you have a, a, a relationship. There's nothing. There's nothing that can separate y'all two because of your connection that y'all have. There's nothing that there's nothing that can separate y'all two because of your bond. And so when you have that connection, when you have that bond, G say, I can multiply more on your life. I can you can bear much fruit. But he said, apart from me, you can't bear no fruit. Jesus is talking about a relationship. How many of you right now today have a relationship with Jesus. Don't tell me, oh, I got one. Because Jesus already know who have a relationship with him or not. A lot of y'all, y'all have a relationship with the world, but you don't have a relationship with the word. That's two different things. You have a relationship with the world, something that cannot give you nothing, something they can give and take away. But when you have a relationship with the word of God, the word of God will have a relationship with you and he's going to multiply things in your life. You will always bear much fruit no matter what. A lot of you right now today, you are so fruitful because of your connection. You are so fruitful because of your unlimited resources because Jesus has unlimited resources. So if he have unlimited resources, you have unlimited resources as well. And whatever the word tells you, he said, abide in that word. Jesus told me you got to abide in him through the good and also through the bad. So when you can abide, abide with God in the good and the bad, he said you are too legit to quit. A lot of y'all right now that you're looking for money, but God said you are not connected to the honey. How can you want money when you're not connected to the honey? How can you want blessings and breakthrough when you're not connected to the honey? How can you expect me to open up doors when you're not connected to the honey? You got to be connected to this word first before I can do anything to you. Because the word of God says so it's right here. He said he will bear much football apart from me. He said you can't do nothing. Absolutely nothing you can't do nothing. No doors is coming, no blessings are coming. So how are you getting blessed when you don't have a when you don't have a relationship with Jesus? Come on, somebody, because I know a lot of you people right now that you hear this, oh boy, I just begin these blessings right now. These blessings coming out of everywhere. But Jesus, how can you get a blessing when you are not, not connected? Who's giving you blessings when you're not only have a relationship? Who's giving you these blessings when you're not connected to the word and the word's not connected to you? So where do these blessings come from? Because the word of God said, apart from you can't do nothing. So somebody lying, and we know Jesus is a man who shall not lie. So who's the liar? I've got to keep it real with somebody right now today. So who is the liar? He said, apart from me, you can't do nothing. So who in the world is giving you these blessings? Well, some of y'all swear y'all getting blessed every other day. 
So many right now that you'll put on Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. Oh, man, all these blessings come out of everywhere. And he said, well, how are you getting these blessings when you and I, we're not connected. We're not even joined together. We only have a relationship. So who gave you blessings? Because I can't give you no blessings unless you have a relationship with me. Unless you are stuck to this word and this word is stuck to you. That's the only way that you can get blessed. That's the only way that you can get breakthroughs. That's the only way that you can get miracles. That's the only way that the money can come. A lot of you right now, that you're looking for the honey, but you God said, but where, where, where the money at? The money is connected to the honey. It's connected to you if you had the relationship. Your honey is connected to the blessings. It's connected to the breakthroughs. It's connected to the open doors. It's connected to the to the resources. It's connected to the help. It's connected to the it's connected to the um to to the more than enough. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? And if you do, he said that you will bear much fruit. He ain't say a little bit of fruit. He ain't say some. He said that you will bear much fruit. So he is telling you that he is multiplying more fruit on you. Not adding, not dividing, no fraction, but he is multiplying. Are you following me what I'm saying? Too many of you right now that you're looking for God to do things in your life, but you're not connected to the real one thing he wants you to be connected to. That's the word. How many of you right now today open up your Bibles on a daily basis and read it? I ain't talking about just look at it. I ain't talking about scanning it. I ain't talking about you go to church and your pastor give your word. But no, I'm talking about do you actually open up this hammer right here? Because this Bible right here is the hammer and it breaks down everything that's in front of you. He said even this word is like fire. That would he tell us in the book of Jeremiah. You got to let your hammer do the work. This Bible is your hammer. Inside of this hammer, it is some promises in here. It's, it's blessings in here. It's breakthroughs in here. But the only way that you can receive the fire, the only way that you can receive the blessing, the only way that you can receive the breakthrough, the only way that you can receive the miracle, if you get stuck with it. Some of you right now, that you pick up the Bible for a while, then you put it back down. That means that you don't have no connection with God. God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. But once you start digging deep in this, and once God realizes that you are doing it from the heart, because like I said before, because Jesus is the word, and the word is Jesus, so once you start applying the word of Jesus in your life, and the word of Jesus start applying himself into you, then that's where the fruit comes at. That's where the fruit comes from. It's because your relationship that you have with him. It's because y'all bond. Y'all rock with each other. Y'all stuck with each other. And once you get stuck with Jesus, you're already on the winning side, my brothers and sisters. You're already a captain. You're already a general. You're already a sergeant, a lieutenant, already on his team. And Jesus has never lost, and he's never been defeated. So that's a, that is a good thing just to be on the winning side. But everybody's not on the winning side like they say they are. I got to be honest with you. I got to keep it real with you. Everybody is not on the winning side. Then at the end, he said that you can ask anything in his name. Now, this is the key now. He said that you can ask anything in his name that he'll do it to you. Look how that promise is right there. And the reason why that you can ask anything in God's name and he'll do it for you is because of your connection that y'all have. It's because of the relationship that y'all have. It's because of the bond that y'all have. So no honey, there's no money. If you're not connected to this word, you cannot expect no money. You cannot expect no blessing. You can't expect no breakthrough because the word of God says, apart from me, you can't do nothing. Apart from me, you can't do nothing. You can't even get right. You can't even move a mountain if you're not connected to the word. Because this word is powerful. It strengthens you. It's enlightening you. It moves you. It gives you the strength that you need. Whenever you're weak, it makes you strong because Jesus is strong. He is your connection. He is your help. He is your provider. He is your helper. He is everything that you need more. And it's all right here in this word. Now, I want to encourage all my brothers today. I want to encourage all my sisters today 
Because you know who you are. You ask for God's way too much. And God said, I'm waiting on you. The only thing that you got to start doing today. Just don't do it for me. But you got to do it for yourself. If you're expecting God to do supernatural things in your life. And you're looking for the money. You got to get close to the honey. And this is the honey right here. The word of God. You got to get glued to this. You got to get stuck to it. So it can get glued and stuck to you. And once you get glued and stuck to it. It's going to get glued and stuck to you. Then that's when you will have that, that relationship with Jesus. Then I'm with Jesus will be able to do things in your life. I know what I'm talking about because I was just like y'all at one point in time. I was expecting God to do this. I was expecting God to do that. But God would never do nothing for me because I didn't have no relationship with God. I knew about him. I heard about him. But I had no relationship with him. I picked the battle up a few times here and now, but I never stuck with me. But when I started digging into it and it stuck with me and I ate it and when I ate it, it tasted just like honey and when it tastes like honey, it stuck to me and I loved the way how he was sticking to me so I said give me Jesus and Jesus said give me son so I grabbed him and he grabbed me and we've been stuck ever since together because we have a relationship we have a bond we have a commitment so I said Jesus where's the money at he said serving LT the money the blessing the break is already right here it's because you're connected to me come on somebody you ain't telling me nothing so if you're looking for the blessings, if you're looking for the breakthroughs, if you're looking for the miracles, you got to get connected to the honey so you can find the money. No honey, no money. Am I making myself clear to somebody right now today? It's time for y'all to get a relationship with Jesus right now. Nobody know when your time is up. Don't wait till the last minute. When you're in the coffin and say, oh man, I wish I would have had. You got a chance right now. You have an opportunity right now to get to know him. To have a relation with him. To be connected to him. To be solid with him. To be glued to him. To be stuck with him. Today is the day, my brothers and my sisters. Get into your Bibles. Start reading on an everyday daily basis. Don't do it because you want something. Don't do it because you don't need of anything. But you want to do it. You want to do it because you're in love with Jesus. You want to do it because you want a connection. You want to do it because you want a relationship. And once you do it, you will see he will get close to you. You will see he will get stuck with you. Then you will see how God will move in your life. And I believe and I declare right now today that someone out there in the world right now today is going to get their relationship with Jesus. They're going to dig in. They're going to dive in. And once you eat this word, it's going to stick to you just like honey. And when it gets stuck to you like honey, then you'll know where the money and the blessings and the breakthroughs and the miracles are. Amen? Amen. And I hope that this word for somebody today. And if it was, give God some thanks, praise, and glory in the house of the Lord right now today. Can you please pray with me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life. To guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today, by us praying a simple little prayer, that God is already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is with us, .alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him. Always honor him. Always praise him. Always get connected to this word so the word can get connected to you. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you've ever seen their face. Prayer help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to continue to keep y'all in prayer. Y'all guys keep me in prayer too. This is Seven Minutes LT. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' holy mighty name, God bless you.